Stop it! I've heard about her sacrifices, her selflessness. But who do you think she sacrificed, hmm? To take care of those children, hmm? The best she could, man. Where was she when you got jumped uptown and I couldn't find you for a whole day? Where was she when they broke into our house and stole my laptop? She was providing for us. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about how art imitates life or in some cases, totally calls life out. We'll be looking at Atlanta's Trini to the Bone and the New Yorker's latest cover, which both peel back the curtain on race, labor, and basically how invisible caregivers are holding the world together. And of course, no one notices. Spoiler alert though, it gets real deep, real fast. Let's jump in. Where's Sylvia? Oh, honey, I already told you she's not going to make it today. Is she going to pick me up? No, honey, mommy or daddy will pick you up. But I want Sylvia. I know, honey. Are you sad because you missed your yoga class? So here's the setup. In Atlanta's Trini to the Bone episode, we meet Sylvia, a Trinidadian nanny who pretty much raises his kid, Sebastian. Sylvia isn't just a babysitter, though. She's like the parent, feeding him, singing to him, basically doing everything short of putting him through college. Do you need an ocean breath? Everything is going to be okay. Hugs. Mommy? Oh, I guess best. Sylvia walks me to my class. Oh. Okay. Now, let's be real. Sylvia knows a lot more about Sebastian's favorite breakfast than his actual parents do. I mean, they probably confuse oatmeal with grits. Anyway, Sylvia's doing all the emotional labor here. And when she suddenly passed away, yeah, I know, I didn't expect that either, right? But Sebastian is heartbroken while his parents are like, so um, how fast can we get a replacement? But a slag. He ain't turned up like me. He ain't on tip like I. Get a burnt up white teeth. Get the f with my squad. Why is he still here? Where's Sylvia? I don't know. Been trying to reach her all morning. Has he eaten? Uh, I ordered us some coffees from Balthazar and I got him an eggs Benedict. He wouldn't touch it. All right. Ash, bud. Hey, can you, um, can you try the bread? I don't like that. It's bland. What, do you want me to put something on it for you? Spicy curry mango. What? Yeah? Okay. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh. How's that slight pepper? That stuff is really spicy. Oh my god. Sylvia died. <gasps> Wow. They don't know. The death of Sylvia opened a whole new can of worms for this family. Hey, you know, his teacher asked me why we weren't at family picture day in front of him. I mean, we could have been the only parents. Right? I mean, seriously, it was ridiculous. As the episode goes on, they start to realize how little they know about their son and that their greatest connection is by name and blood alone. But here's where it gets even more intense. At Sylvia's funeral, her own daughter dropped some truth bombs. She was furious that Sylvia spent all her time caring for families and had nothing left for her own. I mean, that's gotta sting, right? 
Imagine attending a funeral and someone's like, hey, by the way, my mom loved raising your kid more than me. So thanks for that. You remember that old dog we used to have when you were... <laughs> but this is where the show gets real with its themes on race, class, and the undervalued, unseen labor of immigrant women. Sylvia's family lost her emotionally long before they lost her physically. Sylvia didn't love your family. She really did. You're her brother? Nah, call me Pat. Stop it! I've heard about her sacrifices, her selflessness. But who do you think she sacrificed, hmm? To take care of those children. Hmm? Where was she when you got jumped uptown and I couldn't find you for a whole day? Where was she when they broke into our house and stole my laptop? She was providing for us. I needed you, mommy. And where were you? And if that didn't already get you thinking, the New Yorker's latest cover pretty much hammers home that same point. It is this beautiful yet sobering artwork that highlights the invisible labor that makes all our lives function smoothly. Most of us never even have to think twice about it. It's like when your Wi-Fi is working perfectly, you take it for granted. And the second it goes down, you're like, I can't live like this anymore. Sylvia was basically the Wi-Fi in this kid's life. You know, Sylvia was my babysitter too. <laughs> wow. You know, it was a sad day. But she'd be happy we're out here, you know. Yeah. Your, your accent is so strong. Yeah, everyone says that. So how you know Sylvia? Well, Sylvia used to care for Sebastian. Oh, serious. You grow up in Trinidad? Or Jamaica? No, it's Trinidad and Tobago. And no, I'm from Tribeca. Oh. So... What do these two pieces of art tell us? They both lay it out bare the reality that while art might imitate life, it also reveals what life tries to sweep under the rug. You know, when you clean your room by shoving everything into the closet. The stories of caregivers like Sylvia, women of color, often immigrants, are all around us. They're vital, yet somehow invisible. These works of art remind us that they deserve better, better recognition, better treatment, and maybe fewer clueless parents. So here's the big takeaway. Art isn't just reflecting life. It is holding up a mirror and saying, hey, do you see what's really going on here? And sometimes that reflection isn't very pretty but it's very much necessary. Also, next time you're making oatmeal for your kids, maybe, I don't know, check and see if they like it first. So what do you think? Did Atlanta's Trini to the Bone episode hit you as hard as it hit me? How do you see invisible labor and caregiving showing up in your own life or in society? Drop your thoughts below. And if you're loving these deep dives, go ahead and hit that like button. Or even better, smash that subscribe button like Sylvia is smashing it as Sebastian's real MVP. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.